Honorable participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great privilege for me having this opportunity to address the distinguished participants uh, of the conference on the European Convention of Human, on Human Rights at 70, the Central European Narrative, which is held in commemoration of the 70th anniversary of the adoption of the European Convention on Human Rights. Round anniversaries provide a good opportunity to take stock of past achievements and to consider future challenges. Such an anniversary is an ideal moment to reflect, to reflect on our common successes, identify the lessons learned, share the knowledge accumulated over the past decades and renew or our uh, collaborative commitment based on common values, objectives and interests. The European Convention on hum uh, Human Rights is the most important legal instrument of the Council of Europe. The role and significance of the Council of Europe as, uh, as the continent's leading human rights organization is invaluable. The objective of the Convention, namely to in ensure the practical and collective enforceability of human rights and fundamental freedoms, was already formulated in the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Convention has entered into force in 1953 and since then, Europe has gone through countless changes and faced score of challenges, the changes of regime in post-socialist states, the Russian-Ukrainian war, the COVID-19 pandemic, migration, etc. No wonder in the era of ever-evolving uh, societies, one might easily raise the question, how can a 70-year-old Convention provide effective protection for human rights in 2023, and how can it still work as a living instrument? In this vein, the aim of this conference is to demonstrate the indisputable reactivity and modernity of the Convention, putting, putting uh, an emphasis on the European Court of Human Rights interpretation techniques and focusing on Central European countries. 46 countries from Iceland to Azerbaijan has joined the uh, convention since it entered into force which covers a wider geographical scope than the European Union with its, with its uh, 27 member states. From the 16 protocols that have been attached to the Convention, Protocol Number 11 had the greatest effect on the operation and activities of the Court as it introduced important changes in its institu institutional structure. On the, uh, on the 31st of October 1998, the European Commission of Human Rights uh, ceased uh, uh, to operate uh, Thus, a four-decade-long epoch ended on that day. The European Court of Human Rights has been operating under the present scheme since 1st November 1998. At present, the Court comprise, comprises uh, 46 judges, one from every member state of the Convention. Following the democratic transformation, our country was the first from the former communist dictatorship to join the organization and its human rights protection mechanism. Hungary signed the convention on 6 of November 1990 and deposited the ratification with the Secretary General of the Council two years later. Since that day, Hungarian and non-Hungarian nationals can turn to the European Court of Human, Human Rights against the Hungarian state or its agents for violations of the rights enshrined 
in the Convention and its protocols. Ladies and gentlemen, the ratification of the uh, European Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms was and is a legal moment of exceptional uh, significance. The Convention has become a protective pillar of human rights in all the 46 member states and the European Court of Human Rights, which is often referred to as the crown jewel of the Council of Europe and which provides legal protection to more than 800 million Europeans, has played an invaluable role in this process. Being a state party to the Convention means that the Convention's obligations must be fulfilled by the, by the state. The court's judgments must be executed, which may necessitate the, adop the adoption of individual and general measures. The fundamental law of Hungary is based on the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, which also regards the Convention as a cornerstone of the international human rights regime. In this way, the Convention has directly and indirectly become a fundamental building block of the Hungarian legal system. The Ministry of Justice, which is responsible we are the government agency for the representation of the government in the court proceedings and for the proper execution of the court's judgments. Each year submits a report to the relevant parliamentary commission informing the commission of the judgments of uh, the court and the measures taken in consequence of the judgments. The Minister of Justice has submitted annual reports on the relevant aspects of the court's judgments since uh, 2007, including statistic, statistics, statistics and case descriptions which reports were adopted by the competent parliamentary committees after a debate allowing member of parliament to raise questions. The court's judgments sometimes provoke fierce legal debates in the member states. In some cases, member states dispute the court's ruling, which I think is quite natural, natural for a respondent uh, state. This, however, does not question the, uh, the significance of the court's work and our respect for its judgments. Such disputes, disputes are in no way a sign of dysfunction of the system. On the contrary, a meaningful constitutional dialogue presupposes disagreement based on different viewpoints and positions. The political legitimacy of the convention system also requires that its activities stand up the scrutiny of uh, Europeans whom the convention system is intended to serve. I would like to emphasize that Hungary respects the court's judgments and takes all necessary individual and general measures to remedy the violation found by the court. The past 30 years during which the European Convention on Human Rights was in force in Hungary is therefore uh, characterized by mutual respect and cooperation. The Hungarian constitutional system, including the government, the parliament, the judicial branch, is committed to the protection of human rights at a high level and in accordance with international standards. Overall, it can be said that, is, that in the last 30 years, the protection of human rights has developed in our country in accordance with the convention and the practice of the court guarantees for the protection and enforcement of human rights are present at a high level. Finally, I would like to extend my thanks to the organizers of this conference for giving us an opportunity to familiarize ourselves more thoroughly with the, the elements of this 70-year-old uh, legal regime. I'm sure that the excellent national and international speakers of the conference will provide 
eliminating insight into the various aspects of operation of the Convention and its supervisory, supervisory body, the Court. Ladies and gentlemen, with these remarks, I wish you a very successful meeting, good work, and fruitful discussion. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you.